Let's appreciate the worship team and the band. Thank you so, so very much. Yes, we thank uh, Bishop and Mama for allowing us this opportunity to, to uh, and for the invitation to preach. We are so, so grateful for them. We also thank Pastor Beatrice and Pastor John. Thank you. And Pastor Richard and Pastor Alex. Good to see you. And Pastor Brian and Pastor Harriet, you guys are a blessing. You are off to a great start, and we pray for many, many great things to happen to you and doors of opportunity to open for you. And so we pray that over your life today. My name is Reverend Rhonda Clark, and this is my handsome husband, Dr. Ron Clark. <laughs> We've been helping here for the last 10 years with the Maasai, and specifically the Maasai and the Samburu people. Um, back in America, we are also blessed with three beautiful children who are in their mid thirties that and so they bring us immense joy but I want to just take a moment to introduce Dr. Ron to you for those of you who may not know that he has been in the ministry for 45 years he may not look it but yeah <laughs> but 30 years as a pastor and last 15 years as a missionary and he serves as the president of the Maasai Trust he works tirelessly to try to make a difference in the lives of those who are marginalized or those who just need our assistance. And I can personally attest to his faithfulness and that he truly loves and does what he preaches. Amen? Amen. So also he's dedicated his life to a higher education, receiving his bachelor's degree in education, his master's degree from more, from his master's degree in theology, his doctor of ministry degree from Oral Roberts University, and finally his PhD in organizational management and leadership from Aiden University. I, I think he has so many degrees he has a fever. Ah, oh my goodness. You can visit our website at themasaitrust.org. That's all one word, themasaitrust.org. So you can plug that in later and give it a look. We are members of DCI Kasserani Zimmerman and Shiloh, and it is our prayer that you also make this your church. Amen? We love it. If you're following us online, we would appreciate it to let us know by typing in amen and let us know where are you watching us from. We would love to know where in the world are you watching us from. Buona Sifiwe? Amen. I would also like to share a scripture with you that will help you with today's message. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 8, it says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. God delights in cheerful givers who act with a joyful heart. And when we give grudgingly or out of duty, we miss the delight, we miss out on aligning our hearts with God's generous nature. Sharing with others should be seen as a privilege and not a burden. Amen? Buona Sifiwe. Let's lift our hands toward Dr. Ron and let's pray over him today as he brings the word of encouragement for us. Holy Spirit, we come to you today and to ensure that our heart's desires align with your heart's desire. We want to reap a harvest from sowing and giving. Anoint my husband to speak to you as an oracle. Give Dr. Ron wisdom as he brings us the word and helps us to understand the joy of giving from our own heart. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. Can we all stand and give Dr. Ron a warm greeting? Sante.
Hallelujah. Forty-five years. Wow. That's a lot of shoe leather. Amen. He may turn to your neighbor and tell him you're going to leave here better than you came. And then you may be seated. Do any of you remember the last time I preached here? It's, it's been a few weeks, maybe a month, I don't remember. It, it all runs together. Do, do you know the topic I preached on? Did I preach on laws of the harvest? Do you remember? I know I'm in your book somewhere. Well, maybe I'm not. Maybe you've filled it up and left that one at home and have a new one. I don't know. I think I preached on laws of the harvest, I think. Yeah? Hmm? Say it again. Seed time and harvest. Um, not, I was given this, the, the, the title or the, the, the uh, message for the, the bishop wanted me to preach today, and it dovetails beautifully with the laws of the harvest. And at the end of the service, I hope I'm going to run, we're going to repeat all the laws because they apply to exactly what we're going to be talking about today. And it's building, you know, uh, line upon line, here a little, there a little. You don't get this all at once. Somebody said to me, how, 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 how did you spend so much in education? And I, I said, it's just 11 years after I got out of, do you call it, form, what's high school? Form four? 11 years beyond, that's all. About uh, 150,000 US dollars. But I thought it important because I knew that when I left Bible college that I didn't have enough to do what God was going to ask me to do. He told me, go back. You don't have enough. So don't ever feel like you've arrived, that you've come to that place and there's nothing further because I'm still studying. My wife will tell you I spend half my day reading. I still think there's more. I'm 68 almost, a couple of months to be 68. And I, I still wanna learn. So don't, give, don't, don't get to this place where you stop seeking and you think, well, I've, I've, I've done enough. You, you, you need all you can get. Listen to me now. This is a youth service. You, you're, you're just starting. Don't complain now. I was in my 50s working on my, my PhD. Some people, when they get to 50, they retire. I was just putting new, new tires on. I, I didn't know I was supposed to retire. Retread maybe, but not retire, you know? Amen. You know, I've, I've been to, I, I can't count the number of countries. Did, do, do you remember how many countries? I'm, we, we put it on a a map one time and check, checked them all off. It, it, it's maybe, may I, I think it's, n I at least touched the dirt of 90, maybe more, I don't know. 
But I've preached in a lot of places, and not everybody has the opportunities that you have. Your media, I, I, not here at the church, but I'm talking about the national media. They, they, they make their money on negativity. When is the last time you heard them say something good about your president? <laughs> Just something. How, when's the last time they said something good about Kenya? I mean, if, you, if this is all you know, then maybe you, you need to travel some. But you can go across any of your borders and you're better off than anyone in East Africa. You have more opportunity. You have the best education system in East Africa. Quit complaining. Get all that you can get. Try. Be a blessing. I promise you, if you do what I teach you today, when you get to next year, you won't be talking about the same things. You'll be talking about something different, something, something new, something different. God is going to give you the desires of your heart. He didn't say it was going to be easy. I got my desire. That incredibly... Gorgeous. Well, there's two sitting there, but talking the one on on the right, woman. She is a, a great blessing in my life, and she comes. You know, I, you 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 get older, and she's asking me things like, "Did you did you tie your shoes? Did you?" I mean, she dresses me, and I. I it's just wonderful to have somebody like that. Uh, not that tie. No, can't do that tie. You no. That's the, that's the tie. She makes sh- sure my shoes are that look like the, I'm in the army, spit shined and ready to go. Where's your watch? Do you, do you have your watch on? Yes, got my watch. She gives to me, and I hope that I give back to her. He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Are you thankful for your spouse? Who? Let let, let me bring my brain back around. Reset. Are you thankful that God's going to give you a wife? How How many of you are married? Who's not married here? You don't have a spouse. Oh, Jesus. Bishop should have left you to preach. Well, you'll find her. You'll find him. And don't settle. Find the best. Find someone that, you, that, that loves Jesus more than you do. Because that's what keeps the marriage going. The title of today's message is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, if if because I live here and this is my home, I have a Kenyan ID. I I am I don't I haven't been back to America in two years. Uh, Your pastor goes to America more than I do. (laughs) Praise the Lord. But we're, we're here with you. We are you. You know, Kenya's not just one tribe. I'm going to ask the president to give me my own tribe. One, it was the, 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 the American tribe. Well, he gave the Indians the tri- a tribe. The Mzungu tribe. You know, I wrote it. I've, how many of you get on face, face page book? Facebook, Facebook? How many of you look on Facebook? You do? I haven't been on in eight years. And I just wrote a little 
note on there and I, I said, you know, the, the talking about, I can't even remember what, what it was about. And I said, you know, they, they call you in Afri Africa, they call you a Mzungu and I misspelled Mzungu. <laughs> One of you, and I'm not going to say the name, corrected me. You spell Mzungu and then spelled it. Well, pardon me. I'm not. I'm, I, 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 how do you spell Mzungu? See, you don't even know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn to Acts chapter 20 and verse 35. And I'm going to be reading. Did you put the New Living Translation like I had in my notes? Okay. Uh, we're going to use the New Living Translation today. I think it's a, good, it's a good translation for you to learn English in as a second language as well. It's not quite as hard as the King James. Whither, thither, tither, hither. Acts 20 and verse 35, it says... And I have been a constant example of how you can help those in need by working hard. I think I'm a good example for the young men on working hard. I think I am. I think Paul was, but I think I am too. You should remember the words that the Lord Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more, that brought not one amen from this congregation. Can you say amen? amen. If there is a weakness in most African countries is it's more they believe many people live like it is more blessed to receive than to give but here's the problem in getting you'll never never get enough you'll never have enough he said if I only had a million it's not enough you get a million you'll want two Three, four, five. If, if you're not giving and you spend your whole life getting, tell me what you're going to take with you. You're going to need a big coffin. I mean a big one about the size of this room. Put all your stuff in it with you. But how much of that goes with you to heaven? You see, all money is, is a tool. You women get upset with your husband because they want to go buy a new tool. Well, money's just a tool. And I can, do you write checks anymore or do you just, what, in pesa? It, if I looked at your in pesa, would I find out what's most important to you? Would Impesa tell me what you love? If you, when they give me, when, when Rhonda and Boney give me some money, it's usually spent on, on Mama. I love to give to her. I love to give to everybody. It is my, I think it's one of my gifts, giving. You know, there have been times when I've given every bit of money that I have away and have zero. And then Rhonda comes to me and says, you know, I, there's no money in the account. And I say, well, I gave it all away. Okay, we're going to have to pray. But do you know there's more joy in giving than receiving? This, I was walking with Boney uh, just out for a long walk in the city. 
And this little boy was sitting there, just a little fella. And he didn't look like he had had much to eat. Uh, his, his belly was a, a bit extended and he just, he, he, looked, he looked beat. He didn't even ask for anything when we walked by. So I told Boney, go in there and, and buy a Fanta orange and get him a, a snack and bring it to him. And that little boy just sat there by himself, nobody around. Couldn't have been more than three or four sitting there. And Boney walked up with that Fanta orange, or maybe it was a grape, and that snack, and that boy got hit, the, his smile touched. I mean, it was the biggest grin, and I thought, you know, if just giving a little something to somebody brings that much joy, I'm going to give more. This statement, it is more blessed to give than receive, where else in the Bible can you find it? Where, do you know where it is? It's not. Did you know at the end of John it says, many other things did Jesus than the, what is contained in this book. And they, this quote, it's more blessed to give than receive, made it to the book of Acts, but it didn't make it to the Gospels. But it doesn't take anything away from the authority of it. It is more blessed to give than receive. I would, I would encourage you every day to look for, for where you can invest in somebody else's life. Do you guys need anything? Do you have everything you need? Is there anything that you're missing that you, you, you need more of? Whatever you need or whatever is missing, it, give it. If you, how many of you need money? <laughs> well, you're, you're, you, you're never going to have enough if you don't give it. You're, if you want a better job, who wants a better job or a job? Start giving. Give of your time. Give to the church your time. Give, if you have a little bit, give a little bit to somebody else. If you have a, a sandwich, cut it in half and share it with your neighbor. Give something. Give what you want to get. Because the seed that you need to sow is found in your giving, not in your getting. Some of you are on the verge of a breakthrough because you're going to give enough to break it through. I think I said in the last time about the man in Katali that decided that he wanted God to plant his corn and he wasn't going to plant and he didn't plant anything. And four months came by and he, he came back from Nairobi and all he had was a field of weeds. Not one bit of corn came up because he didn't plant anything. Now, pastors away and bishops, bishops away, I can say this to you. You need to be give more to this church. You need to help him fulfill his vision so God can help you fulfill your vision. You, you are not going to get it if you don't give it. Say it. I'm not going to get it if I don't give it. Amen. Turn to Proverbs 11:25. I 
I think this is one of the weaker things that I find in Kenya, and that is pe people don't like to give. They don't like to help their neighbor very much, unless you're in a church or something. But the average Kenyan that doesn't go to church doesn't give much. They've, they, they, they've dedicated their life to getting, but they're not very happy. Proverbs 11.25 says, The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Amen. Do you see, it, it works for you, this giving, this generosity. You know, the, Rhonda and I to, came, came back to Kenya and, and gave, I think, almost everything that we have away to help the Messiah because they were dying. Not by the ones and tens and hundreds and thousands, but as of today, we, we have to contact each clan to find out the number that have died. But since 2019, they've lost nearly 140,000 people have died of starvation or disease or, or water. 140,000. That means that the Messiah now have less than a million living. They used to be the biggest tribe in, in, in this entire region up 200 years ago. Now they're the smallest. And do you know that 64 Messiah day from starvation 64 which means that by by the year 56 which is me as I would be a hundred years old the last Messiah will die they are they have entered into an extinction level event if something doesn't happen and something has to happen because we can't afford to lose the Maasai. Do you know 12% of your entire budget for, for your national government comes from tourism and they're not coming to see you? <laughs> they, don't, they don't have Kikuyu tours or Kamba or Kisi or Tesso or, or Luul or Luya. Well, maybe they would come see the Luya. I don't know, but they, they might. But they'd come see you. But the fact of the matter is the Messiah will, will disappear. The, the, the Samburu are disappearing as well. They, they're actually in worse shape. How, how many Samburu do you think can read? Well, let's, let's go the other way. How many Kenyans can read? About 80%. How many, how many Samburu? 28%. So if you could teach a Samburu to, to read, you would give them something very valuable. Amen? How, how many Maasai can read? 40%. So I'm trying to build schools out there. So that they can go to school. Because right now, the, the, the way the school system is structured in Kajiado County, they have to walk 15 kilometers to get to school. And have you ever seen a, a, an eight-year-old try to walk 15 kilometers by himself to school? The first day of school, they had kids fainting along the way. They almost died. Can you believe that? How, how many, let, let, me, let me give you, how many medical clinics do they have out in Maasai land? Get outside of Kitengela, besides Kitengela. How many medical clinics has the government put out in, in Maasai land? I found one. One. They have to go to Kajado town to, to get medical care. 
or they have to go to private. Now, there are private places you can go, but you sometimes, you know, it's in your constitution that we sh we're supposed to be able to get health care. Now, if I want to stay healthy, is it, do you think it'd be good if I, if I help them with their health that maybe God would bless my health too, because I'm going to reap what I sow. But what, what would you do with, they have one clinic in like uh, Cajado County, there's one clinic in Bissell, and it has one public health officer. And in that area are 6,000 people. Think of that. We need to give. It can't just be all about you. Do you, do you how many clinics are here? Do you have clinics? M more than one? Can you imagine if 6,000 get the flu and, and this one public health officer has to... I, I, it's just not possible. That's why they're dying so quickly. They, they have no care. Turn to Genesis 13, 8 and 9. It says, well... Rhonda, why don't you read that for me? Do you have, is there a microphone? Just let Rhonda read it. Genesis 13, 8 and 9. So Abram said to Lot, Please let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. Or... If you go to the right, then I will go to the left. Look at this quality of giving the other person the choice, the best. He gave his, his nephew the best land. He took the land that was less desirable. Do you think Lot was happy about that? I'm sure that he was shouting, but it got him into trouble because out in the rich part of the of, of town so to speak was a lot of temptation that ended up requiring lot to be rescued by abraham but abraham was selfless and generous and it's his generosity leads to greater blessings from god the more generous you are the more you will receive Tell your neighbor, it's time to step up. You should be at least tithing. Tithings meet your needs. And your offerings bring your blessings. Write that down. Tithing meets your needs. Your offerings and your alms, which is giving to the poor. Like if you gave something to the Maasai Trust, that's an alm. That brings your blessing. In other words, a, your tithing will get you a pro box. But your, your alms and your offerings will get you a Toyota uh, Forerunner or a, 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 what's the, Prado. Is that Prado? Prado? Yeah, that, that, that doesn't come from tithing. When you see somebody in, in, in a Prado that, if they're a Christian, they didn't get it just by being a tither. They're, they're a, they, they have to give more than that. But if you want a pro box, then you're satisfied. I mean, the drug dealers use them. I'm telling you. And though they're fast cars. Police chase those guys down. But if, if you're satisfied with that, then just stay where you are. But if you want something more than what you have now, increase your giving. 
Amen. Amen. Does anybody have a probe box? <laughs> I think I want to buy one for me, but I don't. Turn to Luke 6:38. Luke 6:38. Read, read for us, Rhonda. Luke six thirty eight. It, it comes. It's just after Luke six thirty seven. <laughs> give, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measures that you use, it will be measured back to you. For the same measure that you use in your giving, it will be measured back to you. That's why if you want something better, you're going to have to give something, have to give more. If you want to step up, you're going to have to give to get it. Most people, when they get it, they think they're going to give it. But if you're not in the habit of giving before you get your money, you won't give it after you get it. Amen. Amen. Do you remember the story of the, 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 uh, the uh, pastor mentioned in his, in his message last week about the, the, the woman with the, the few coins. Do you remember that? Where did I... I put it in here somewhere. Who can find it? Oh, here it is. Mark chapter 12, 41 through 44. Mark chapter 12... You know, I always wanted a drum set. Man, it's like being in a spaceship. This is, Rhonda, I want one for Christmas. No, sir. I, I want one just like this, even with the broke. How do you do that? You, you, you must beat that thing to death. <laughs> just give me one like that. Re- read for me. Mark twelve forty one. Is that what you said? I don't remember. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. And many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make a quadrant. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. I, I'm going to tell you a story about a, a man that I led to Christ in South Sudan. And I still have it in my, my orig, uh, this is a new Bible, but in my wore out Bible, I still have the, the he, he gave me a one, it, it's like a one dollar bill, just, it's a one of what did they use? What did they used to use? It wasn't like it wasn't. Uh, it was. I think it's one dollar, a, a, a Sudanese dollar. And he gave it. It's. He said, "This is the sum total of everything that I have. I have nothing besides this, and it's all wore out, you know." And he gave it to me, and I said, "What do you want?" He said, I want uh, a business fixing cars. I said, okay, let's agree. 
and we prayed. And I had gone there for four years, and before I left preaching in that region, he had his company. One dollar was all it took to get the ball rolling. Your miracle is connected to your offering. You shouldn't throw money in the, in the offering, just take a, you know, just randomly throw it in. You should pray over it and, and call it a seed. He wanted to fix cars, and, and, and if I can take you to the place where, unless something's happened, I can take you to his car dealership. What did the rich people do, it said? Didn't it tell you how they gave? Jesus is sitting here watching us give, okay? How did the rich people give? They hired a band. They, they literally hired trumpeteers to go ahead of them. And they had their, their servants walk ahead of them and behind them. And they carried it in big boxes and they would go to the, to the wall in the temple there was a big wall cut out and a, like a doorway and they would dump their offering in front of everybody. And when the trumpet started, the preachers were very happy. Here comes the big givers. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Everybody's clear. They're, they're so happy. Hey, look, the big giver. Hey. They got all the glory. They got, they got their, all that God was going to give them, they got when they, they gave that. And that was nothing more because they got the glory. You know, when your right hand gives and your left hand doesn't know, that's the best kind of giving. And what, who did Jesus notice? Did he notice the rich man who reached in his wallet and gave out of, out of what he had he didn't, he didn't dig deep. You know, there's some people in this room that could give more than others, but if, if you're not giving sacrificially, if it's not costing you anything, it's not, really a, it's not really much. It's based on what you have. You're thinking, I've got to have a lot to give something for it to mean anything. No, Jesus sees it when you give all you have. The, if you have a 20 bop in your pocket and you give it, it, it means something. If that's all you have, that's all you have. But based on what you have and how God has blessed you, God wants you to give. Amen. 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 Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6 or, or 9, 9 through 10. Are you getting me? We have, Rhonda and I have a Kenyan son. Well, we have two now. Well, actually, we have a lot of, a lot of them. But the first one, his name is Calvin. And we helped him get through, through his, uh, his bachelor's degree. And now he's uh, getting ready to be a CPA. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm very proud of him. Do I miss my money? No, not when I see somebody turn, turn it into uh, a, a success like he has. Amen. Amen? Amen. Help somebody. Amen. Yes. First Timothy 6, 9 through 10. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I... I'm not used to um, government run the way government is run here. 
I, I just have never been around. Government is very close to the people. I mean, if a policeman stops, you have to buy him lunch. In America, if he, if he takes it, he would go to jail for five or t ten years. But here, it's just better to buy him lunch. Don't you think? Huh? Unless, as Pastor said, you're driving a black Prado. Then he won't stop you. I don't know why, but if you're, if you're in a pro box, if he can catch you, he's gonna, he, he, that, you're going to have to buy him lunch. Or if you're driving a matatu, huh? or a tuk-tuk, uh, you better get, have that lunch money ready. There, there, is, there, there is a kind of greed that's in people where they're only interested in themselves. They're not interested in others. I've seen preachers like that. They're more interested in getting than giving. Luke twelve fifteen. Luke 12, 15, what, what is it? Honey? And he said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Life does not consist in what you own. But if you look around Kenya, you would think that when you have a lot, you've arrived and you're happy. I live in an area where there, there is a, a lot of wealthy Somalis. I mean a lot of them. And we're told in America that Somali, Somalians don't have anything. So that a lot of money is sent to Somalia and they, they have... They, they have the best mall, the BBB. Have you been? I want to be Somali. I mean, if, if that's what, I mean, it, that's quite a mall. I mean, it's, the, you, you can't buy anything. You can't buy a Coke in there for less than $1,000, I think. But be careful that you don't make getting your goal. You will get if you give. It just put the getting, you can ask God for it and then just give. And it will come to you. First, you're going to be happier that you gave and blessed and helped somebody. But God hears your prayers and then as you give, that prado is starting to look for you. Not to run you over, but to be in your, to be, to be in your front yard. Amen. As you give, Lord, I, I, I call in my Prado. And then a Pro Box shows up. You say, I, I don't want the Pro Box. I'll give the Pro Box to, to Dr. Ron. He can have that one. I want a Prado. But your, your getting is tied to your giving and not remember not a lot if you don't have a lot but a little giving if you have very little can bring in big things as well Amen. turn to your neighbor and say do you do you have a pro box yet <laughs> just ask him Ecclesiastes 5 and, and 10. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 10. 
Yeah. He who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver, nor he who loves abundance with increase. This also is vanity. Those who love money will never have enough. Did I say that earlier? You're never going to have enough if your goal is money. But if your goal is giving, you're going to have more than enough. Say, all my needs. How does the, what's the rest of that scripture? My God shall supply all my needs according to my checkbook. My m -Pesa account. No. What he has. His warehouse determines your blessing. Not your warehouse. So when you give it, if you give it, listen, if what you have can't buy what you need, then give it away. If what you have is not enough, then turn it into seed so that you can get enough and be blessed. So take a little extra money. Say, God, this is not enough for what I've got to pay. So I need to give something in order to get that back, that, what I need. You have more than enough, Lord. I'm, I'm accessing the, the heavenly ATM. I'm putting something in. And God, you're going to take care of me. Amen. You're going to bless me. Yes. Abundantly. All right. I'm done with that message. I want to read this to you as we go. I've got four minutes. We talked about uh, Jesus is Lord of the harvest. And he has laws that govern harvests. And how many of you need a harvest? A big one. I do. I need a big one. I need, right now, I need $2 million. Anybody have it? Go to the, the, the messiahtrust.org website and put it in for me uh, because I've got a lot of people to feed. Law one. Your seed must be planted for you to have a harvest. John 12, 24. I'm going to go fast. Law two. You must render your seed useless to you. When you give something, don't go back to the preacher next week and say, you know, I put in too much last week. I, I need to get back some. No, once you let go of it, it is no longer yours. It's God's. And and God will multiply it back. So render what you've given in the past. Don't regret. Listen to me. Look at me. Everybody look at me. Don't regret that you ever gave a big offering. Because it's determining your future. Number three. You must plant what you expect to harvest. If you need money, give money. If money can buy it, give money. You don't have to go out and get a camel and give a camel to the church if you need camels. But if you give enough money to buy a camel, then you're giving and eventually you can get camels out of that. Amen? Number four, your harvest size is established when you sow your seed. Based on how much you give is how much you're going to get back. But you're always going to get back more than you gave. God will not be indebted to you. Law six, always wait a period of time between, huh? Oh, excuse me, law five. Yeah, you can tell she's a cop. You, you, you broke law five. Your seed must be planted in good ground. This is good ground. Shiloh is good ground. Zimmerman's good ground. I've got better returns in my giving to the church here than I have in giving to some other churches with, that we've been to. Law six, always wait between your planting and your harvesting. That's Mark 4, 26 and 27. There is a, you know, if, if you give a uh, hundred bop, there's not gonna be a Mercedes in your, in your driveway. 
when you get home. Because your giving is in proportion to your receiving. But if you keep giving your best, God will eventually release his best into your, into your, into your life. Law 7, you must maintain your crops for a proper harvest, Matthew 13, 7. Law 8, always sow to your harvest, not from it. There are a lot of people that say to me as a pastor, when I was a pastor, pastor, when I get a million dollars, I'll give to the church. And I have always said, you're not going to have a million dollars because you don't give to the church. You see, they only want to give out of their abundance, not out of their need. But if you give out of your need, that's what releases the seed. The harvest comes out of the need. When, when you're really low, Rhonda and I at times have gotten down to, to, to nothing. We've, there have been times when we've split a, a, a sandwich in half, and she gets half, I get half, and we just thank God. It's not always that way. But there are times we, we've given because we're expecting something big to come. Amen. Law 10, a part of your harvest is for sowing again. Uh, eight, always sow to your harvest. I did that. I told you that one already. Always sow to your harvest. Law 9, your expense is always highest at harvest time. When, when life is costing you more then you have, you're getting ready for harvest. Are you, are you running tight right now? Money's tight. Expect harvest. You too? Are you? You? Expect harvest. Harvest time comes when you're at your tightest, when, when it looks impossible. When, it, when you've, you, you, you're, 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 pull, you're pulling out your change uh, jar that's on your dresser and you're dumping out your change in the, in the offering, that's a, good, that's a good sign because you've given it all. Now God's prepared it for you and will bring it in. Number 10, a part of your harvest is for sowing again. Don't just get money and use it all up, but get money, get your paycheck, and then sow it into the offering. 10% goes to the tithe, and then you give your, like, the, 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 to the building program. Remember, Bishop needs a billion shillings or something? Is it a billion? Billion two. Yeah, billion two, one point two. So we we've got to we got to give some extra to get to one point two. Am I hearing heaven? Where is that coming from? Is that somebody's phone? I'll take your phone if it's your phone. All right, law 11, a part of your har harvest is for you to keep. And that, I'm, I know, I'm done, and I've got one more. Law 11, a part of your harvest is for you to keep. So you don't have to give it all. God's not saying you can't have anything nice. Uh, you just got to give it all to me. And if, if a preacher is making you give everything that you ever have and you never have anything for yourself, the, the preacher's wrong. Because your earnings, he gives you a portion to keep for yourself. You've got to eat. You've got to have clothes. You've got to have your things paid for. So you, you pay your bills. But, but even though it's not a bill, your tithe must be a part of that. Amen? Your offerings to the building program have to be a part of that. And last law is your harvest is a miracle. I've been telling Rhonda because we've been waiting for a, a, a breakthrough for some time. And we're, we're now getting to the place where I sense in my spirit a breakthrough anointing. The expenses are, are the highest that we've ever, ever been with the least that we've ever had. 
that tells me God's getting ready to break through. And I'm going to tell you when it happens. Amen? Now, how many of you have reached your limit? You, you, you've given and you need a breakthrough yourself. I want you to stand and we're going to pray for, for a, an, an anointing to release that, that harvest into your life. If you have given as much as you can give and you're, you're now like the, the widow giving the, the last of what's in the jar and you're struggling and you're, you, what you have is not enough. Let, let me put it this way. What you have is not enough to, to get what you need to get. If you, that's you and, and you're at the end of this, you, you feel like you've reached the end, you've given and, and now you need a breakthrough, stand up. Just stand up. You can stand up for somebody in proxy too. If, it, if it's your sister, brother, mother, cousin, the church. Now lift your he- hands to heaven from the source. S- say, Jesus is my source. All right. Father, I pray for everyone who has their hands raised. Ron and I agree with every person. It says, if two or three agree as touching any one thing that they ask, it shall be given to them. So we stand in agreement, believing that your best is on the way. I thank you, Jesus, for this congregation. We need people. I pray for an increase in the number of people that come to Shiloh. I'm believing that Shiloh, by the end of next year, will have a thousand in youth. Which means that we've got to bring our friends and our neighbors and those that we know at work. We've got to bring them here. But by next year, I pray by the end of the year that we'll be running a thousand. That this tent will not be big enough. That the Shiloh worship service will have over a thousand. They'll be looking to go to a second service. And for Zimmerman, Lord, they're at 1,000. They need to go to 2,000. I'm believing, God, that you're going to, by the end of next year, this is the year of release. Release between now and in the next year and a half. Release people back into this church. And I thank you, God, that when, when it's said and done by the end of next year, that we'll be together with with both churches at 4,000 people. Now, pick somebody as you're praying that you've been praying for to be saved, to bring to church, or if you haven't been praying for someone to get to church, pray for a neighbor right now. Call out their name and say, God, make a way for me to get them to church. You're not going to have any visitors if you don't bring anybody. So we want to bring friends to church. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a great big hand. Thank him. Thank him for for your breakthrough. Hallelujah. We thank you, God.